Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Um, today we will be starting a podcast called Mana Stream. We and in this episode we will be going over the lore of the backrooms for dummies. Um, with us today we have somewhat dumb. Say hi. Hi. I get, yeah. I exist. Hi. I'm yes, here. He, if you know him, he you may know him. He's from Suggesty Bestie from the Google Snake episode, and he was featured in my newest episode in the new in my new channel my extra channel um but without further ado i guess we can go ahead and start looking at some of the new backrooms lore yippee i guess yeah and we're gonna do be doing a lot of reading so it's this is basically a backrooms pro podcast if you if you say so in turn in, te in technical terms because there will be a lot of reading a lot Okay, let's go. All right, so this is the most iconic level, level zero. This is the one that everybody knows, almost everybody at least. So there have been a lot of like different versions and different like universes of level zero, so, but this is the official level zero. So this is not the Kane Pixels one or the uh, Wiki dot one. This is the official Wiki one. So this is this is level zero, aka the lobby. Survival difficulty of a class one, which is he is safe, unstable, but is devoid of entities. Level zero is the first level of the backrooms, being the first known that most that most wanderers will initially find themselves in. Description. Level Zero is an expansive non-Euclidean space resembling the back rooms of a commercial building. All rooms in Level Zero share the same superficial features such as worn mono-yellow wallpaper, old moist carpet, scattered electrical outlets, and inconsistently placed fluorescent lighting. Aside from these common features, no two rooms within the level are identical in layout. The fluorescent lighting in level zero hums at a constant frequency. This buzzing is notably louder and more obtrusive than ordinary fluorescent lights, and the an examination of the fixtures to determine the source has proven inconclusive. The most prominent threat in level zero is the stark lack of available resources, as the fluid saturating the carpet has been deemed unsafe for human consumption. Most are likely to perish before managing to find an exit due to extended dehydration, starvation, and exhaustion. Linear space in level zero is altered drastically. It is, it is possible to walk in a straight line, return to the starting point, and end up in a completely different set of rooms than the one previously traversed. Due to this phenomenon, and the visual similarity between each room, consistent navigation of level zero has proven very difficult. Devices such as GPS locators and compasses fail to function within the level, and radio com communications are audibly distorted and often prove unreliable. Above the ceiling tiles in level zero rise, lies, lies a cramped dark space roughly one meter in height. The air in this area is stale and thick with dust, making it difficult to breathe, and electrical wires line the ceiling in all directions. Attempting to use this space as a means of navigation is impractical as the ceiling tiles easily give way under pressure. All right, let's look at entities. As report, as reports are inconsistent and difficult to verify, it is unknown whether entities exist within Level Zero. In addition, no interactions with other wanderers have been reported during explorations, as in the individual wanderer is located at all times, is isolated at all times. I cannot speak today, sorry. Entrances and exits. Entrances. Level Zero, and by extension the back rooms, can be accessed by accidentally no clipping out of bounds in normal reality. In addition, many levels can lead one to level zero. Like, a lot of levels. A lot. Exits. Exit. There are five currently known methods of exiting level zero. A variety of factors will eventually cause the hallways to fade into level one. Breaking a wall will lead one to level negative one. Breaking through the floor may either lead to level 27 or the void. Rarely, wandering far enough in any direction will lead to the Mandela room, and 
one may occur occasionally find doorways constructed of glass, which lead to level 13. Okay, so level zero, also known as the lobby, is a is a decently safe level, best devoid of entities. It's it's characterized as an extens as an expansive non-Euclidean space with prominent features like mono yellow wallpaper, fluorescent lights, and moist yep, and moist carpet. Entities in level zero do not exist. And and basically if you see something or hear something that isn't that isn't normal, it is most likely a hallucination. The reason pe most people um, perish in this level is because of just the overall lack of supplies. Most people would die of starvation, dehydration, or exhaustion before even reaching somewhere that has an exit. There are a variety of different ways to get to exit level zero, but there's only one way of entering level zero which is no clipping out the bounds of reality. And also the other one, the other just random entrances into level zero that pretty much just show up whenever it's most inconvenient. How enthusiastic. So overall, pretty good level. It's kind of overrated in my opinion, but it's, it's a classic, so I'll give it that. So let's just move on to level one. Yeah, you can read it. Level one, the level after level zero, is named the habitable zone. The survival difficulty is a class one. It is safe, stable, and has a minimal entity count. Level one is the second level of the back rooms and one of the only levels wanderers can di enter directly through the front rooms. It's also known as reality, by the way. Okay, okay. General description. Level 1 resembles a typical warehouse with fluorescent lights hanging from the ceiling, occasional machinery such, such as forklifts, and hallways and stairwells which peel off and lead to separate areas of the level. Oftentimes, puddles on the floor compromised of almond water will evaporate and condense into a thick fog, reducing visibility for wanderers who traverse through these parts. Curiously, the puddles never seem to fully evaporate and remain permanently. Level 1 has a consistent and reliable source of electricity, both to the lights and to various outlets on the walls which help many groups to survive. Due to the, e due to the ease of reaching this level, may and many wanderers opt to either join or form a group to ensure their survival. This level contains various dangers that may pose a threat to wanderers. Examples include blackouts, which occur within this level and last for minutes to even days, leaving the level without light. During such blackouts, entire sections of the level will be plunged into complete darkness, allowing entities to emerge and hunt more successfully. When traversing darker areas, it is advised for wanderers to carry flashlights so as to scare off any unwanted encounters. Additionally, pieces of, re pieces of rebar or sharp metal may occasionally jut out from walls, harming any wanderers who are not careful. Due to the fact that most of these metal pieces are coated in a thick layer of rust, Wanderers will almost definitely contract tetanus should it pierce the skin. The room temperature of this level is quite high, sitting at roughly 30 to 35 degrees Celsius, 86 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, on average. However, it has been noted to drop down significantly within the foggy areas. This level is roughly the same size as level zero and possesses non euclidean properties which makes traversing difficult at times. Occasionally, crates filled with supplies such as almond water, canned food, and weapons can be found at, scattered around, spawning and disappearing at irregular intervals which, which can aid wanderers in their journey. However, there is a chance for these crates, crates to be simply filled with liquid pain, though the reason for this is unknown. Lastly, there are several piece, species, special areas within level one which are quite different in appearance and properties. Basically, okay. liquid pain, I'm just going to explain liquid pain right now, Mana. Yes. Liquid pain is, is this viscous red liquid, dark red liquid, that appears every, almost everywhere in the back rooms where most inconvenient. Basically, if, if you come in contact with liquid pain, drink it, touch it, do something stupid with it, basically, it'll turn your insides into outsides, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, just don't mess with liquid pain. Unique areas. Maintenance halls. Maintenance halls can be accessed by a jet black metallic door within the main section of level 1. 
These walls of these hall the walls of these hallways replace the usual gray concrete for white walls, which may seem bright to many wanderers due to the contrast from the main area. Typically, objects such as plywood, toolboxes, and even whole tables can be found littering the floor. Fewer entered and Fewer entities tend to reside in these halls compared to the main area. These halls also usually contain items such as exposed wiring, faulty pipes leaking almond water, and power boxes. Although they, although they do have electricity coursing through them, these power boxes do not actually surprise electricity to the rest of the level, and instead seem to have no real purpose. Due to all the dangers, it is not recommended to enter any of these halls. However, wanderers want, may want to stay here in the, event, in the event a blackout occurs, as these hallways are always lit up, no matter what. Parking lots. Parking lots are large, empty spaces often drowsed in dense fog that span for miles, taking up a sizable section of level one. Pipes, electrical outlets, and electrical boxes are all quite common to come across when traversing these parking lots. Yet, it is to be noted that most of these either lack any electricity or are incredibly faulty. One should always be wary of that when operating such devices, however, in, um, operating such devices. However, in the cases of which they are powered by electricity, the exact source of which these devices run, run on remains unknown. Albeit, it is presumed that it manages to generate its own power through alien ways. When electricity does course through these outlets and boxes, however, the voltage is extremely high, reaching output readings of up to a gigawatt. How these devices can handle such amount, such amount of power is unknown. These parking lots are inherently empty and can be accessed by simply ascending stairs found between various stores and within level one. However, groups may set up bases here, and hence wanderers should take caution to ensure they do not encounter a hostile group. Although the parking lots do indeed experience power outages as well, these are usually resolved within the hour, unlike the main section. Lastly, these parking lots have the potential to be the nest of various entities, hence wanderers should must, be, must be cautious when exploring said areas. Entities Some entities which reside here are facelings, clumps, hounds, dull dullers, and death moths. However, these there are two level exclusive entities which reside in level one. False, false puddles. Okay. False, false puddles are entities which disguise themselves as simply almond water puddles. However, beneath the surface is a deep pit filled with sharp teeth. These entities are unable to move, but instead depend on un unaware wanderers to fall into their trap. They have no true body and are essentially big mouths filled with teeth and almond water. Although they are hard to find, there are ways to eliminate them once found. One way is to pour liquid pain into the puddle, which will harm them, and they will close their mouths. Another way is to, another way is to throw items such as metal into their mouths to cause them to close, and the metal may pierce their mouth lining and subsequently bleed them to death. However, finding such a puddle, finding a puddle is already a challenge within itself, considering how many regular puddles are present within level one, requiring a lot of supplies to truly make sure a single area is safe. Painting. Poorly drawn paintings and other drawings occasionally line the walls of these warehouses, most commonly found in the long yet empty maintenance halls, Some piece, sometimes having elegant canvas frames, other times being coarse pieces of paper hung on the wall with string and rough nails hammered to the brick wall. These paintings can not only be found on the walls, but rarely also on the floor and or on the ceiling, frequently possessing ladders or ropes to, for accessibility in the ladder case. These, painting, these paintings and drawings are to be avoided when possible, as in, actual, in actuality, most of these supposed drawings are living entities. This doesn't apply in all cases, but every drawing where organisms are shown should be avoided if possible, as those are most likely pose a threat to one's own safety. These drawings could possibly reach out from their respective illustrations to clutch any nearby wanderer, dragging them into the painting. What exactly happens afterwards is unknown. However, it is assumed that these paintings share behavioral patterns with predatory windows, and henceforth act in, act in a similar way. There is also a possibility of said wandered being represented in the drawing itself, as several of them show humanoids in distress who, however, seem to be entirely unresponsive. Yet again, this is only theorized. While it isn't necessary, while it isn't always necessary, is always, while this isn't necessary always the case, in most cases, this, these drawings pose a great threat to wanderers that are, are, that are new in this unfamiliar environment, especially when in a rush or in darker areas where one may not anticipate an attack. 
the paintings and drawings vary in their pictorial context. Some may be crude drawings, while others may express prodigious portraits seemingly from hundreds of years ago. Despite this, the con the contents of each artwork do not correspond with anything found in the in reality, meaning that these entities, perhaps even level one itself, are likely to be perpetrators behind the art itself, as it is entirely unique from actual portraits. Unnervingly, there have been rare accounts of the eyes of certain portraits moving, and even the entity itself moving erratically on occasions. Additional information. A seemingly nonsensical string of letters was recently found written on a wall of, with an unknown substance. The letters will be provided below, and the MEG urge any wanderers who can decipher the code to tell us its meaning. Additionally, a note was found on the floor within a maintenance hall, with the words being written in fading black marker. Day 5. Day 5. Still, Still stuck in this hellhole. I've gotten out of those yellow rooms, but now I'm in a warehouse? It's so strange, to say the least. No one is here. So empty. Might walk around, explore a little. My marker is fading, so I'll be writing a lesser from now on. Update. I found a crate, but it was full of this black, foul-smelling liquid. Yeah, I'm not touching this. Day 8. Day 8. The, the lights, lights just went out. I hear, I hear something in the dark. Gonna try and make take shelter in a hallway. This place is crazy. I saw some paintings, but the eyes were tracking my movements. Oh, fuck. I saw something with glowing eyes in the dark. It had five eyes? What? What? Whatever. This place doesn't make sense anyway. Day nine. That thing with five eyes saved me. Killed a dog-looking creature while it was sneaking up behind me in the dark. It looked at me and just left. I have no idea what that thing is, but I'm honestly grateful. I think I found an exit, so I'll be leaving now. It is unknown what this entity mentioned within the note is exactly. However, further investigations of level one have been fruitless. Outposts, bases, and colonies. There are many groups and bases due to, to, due to the safety of level one compared to the most, le most other levels. However, only the major ones shall be listed below. Backroom colonist base, base blank. Owned by the backroom colonists. Friendly and open to trade. Population ranging from 30 to 60, depending on the number of people stationed there at any given moment. Often interactions with other friendly groups in the level. Of often interacts with other friendly groups in the level. The, the raiders. Information redacted. Cultus Sancti com com comprises of roughly 50 members. Eliminated the raiders to, a quote, appease the holy one. Sacrificial and hostile to who are not in their cult. MEG, -E Base First Light, has a member count of 60, guides lost wanderers to safer areas, open to trade. Entrances and Exits A plethora of entrances and exits have been discovered. However, only the ones which are e the easiest to access will be listed. Entrances Opening doors in many levels has a small chance of leading to this level. Wanderers are able to enter this root level from level 0 by walking up a flight of stairs. Unstable flooring in level 13, indicated by visible odd textures in the f of the floor possesses may the often odd, odd textures on the floor possesses may lead wanderers to this level if they can no clip through it. People may occasionally no clip from this level to the front from the front rooms instead of level 0. Exits Wanderers can exit level 1 by simply continuing to explore, as it usually leads to level 2 or back to level 0 via, via staircase or hallways. An unlocked door may lead to level 2. The hub can be accessed from this level by walking up two flights of stairs and then immediately walking back down. Due to, due to the non-Euclidean properties, wanderers will then be met with a split passage. Wanderers must take the left hallway, then proceed with the right one. After doing so, they will come across a door labeled A, and one labeled B. Enter the B door, then the A door on the other side. No clipping through walls that have outlets may lead to level 188. Okay, do you do you want to summarize it, or do you want me to summarize it? I can summarize it, mana. Okay. So basically, level 1, also known as the habitable zone, is a survival difficulty with a class of class 1, which is safe, stable, and has a minimal entity count. It is it, it's it looks like a warehouse with puddles lining the floor and a in a dim fog covering the basically every level. It contains it 
contains these weird events called blackouts, which you which turns off almost all the lights in the level, which allows the sparse amount of entities to come to come out and prey on wanderers. There are there are many different kinds of there are many different variants and areas of this level that we will not go into now. There are many enti there are many entities but in this level, but they usually show up they usually show up very rarely. There are a lot of communities and outposts in this level and there most are willing to open are willing and open to trade and are friendly to wanderers, except a couple which are usually cults. Entrances and exits. There are many different entrances. Usually the most common one is from level the most common entrance is from level zero or directly from reality. The exits are are there are many exits and including a specific and a specific sort of specific line of events for this place called the hub and many others. Now let's go to level two. Survival difficulty, class two. Unsafe, stable, relatively low empty count. Level two can seldom be entered from normal reality. Similar levels such as level zero and level one. Approximately two to 5% of the wanderers report it as their first introduction into the back rooms. Description. Level two is a network of utility tunnels constructed out of concrete, sometimes via brick, light lightweight metal, and stone, with rusty and malfunctioning pipes lining the walls and or ceilings. Although antique documents found in the level have detailed the level as merely one straight corridor, the number has mysteriously increased since the early 19th century and a sudden boost happening in the mid-1980s. Currently, the level is made up of several corridors whose maximum width can fit three individuals, though the layout causes them to never intersect with each other. In instead, one has to rely on smaller hallways, sometimes vestibules, to travel from one corridor to another. The level's architecture to form to un is uniform throughout most of the level, through the con though the concentration of pipes would increase if one travels northwards. Around 200 kilometers from one's initial entrance point, level two is an unnavigable void of pipelines going in arbitrary directions. Some penetrate through each other in odd man manners, purposefully done to keep wanderers away from traveling beyond that point. Fortunately, however, there have been no reports of entities lur lurking around these areas, most likely due to the heat and extreme humidity. Unknown diseases, mutated bacteria, and, virus have been, and viruses have been discovered within these networks. Geological activity in level two is prevalent, and earthquakes occur as often in regions of the ring of fire in the, as the ring of fire in reality. Any, any powerful enough tremors can demolish and therefore render parts of the level inaccessible due to their lack of maintenance work. Howbeit, most do not have enough intensity to inflict severe damage on the level structure. The circumstances behind these earthquakes presumably originate from the cracks within level 2's giant concrete mass. Chunks of them may push against each other. With these theorized crevices within, one of them may slip from stress buildup, thereafter releasing an outburst of energy. Temperatures in level 2 vary in nature. A gush of, a gush of cold wind can lower temperatures and can suddenly breeze and can suddenly breeze in a warm area snow can form within the levels edifice but it is not known how they can how they enter in the first place but besides that the level averages 20 to 30 degrees celsius while also having certain areas bearing temperatures around 60 degrees celsius areas where air vents are prevalent have colder temperatures exiting the level Exiting the level through this method is not advised, as it, as it is rare to find a system big enough to crawl through for hours. Chipping away the concrete is also futile, as the distance between cracks within the level's matrix can be greater than that of tectonic plates in the front rooms, which otherwise, which, which otherwise would be used to easily traverse through levels. Instances of changing layouts are also common, but the anomaly has yet to be captured by a video camera despite many stating that they were able to touch the seemingly hallucinatory hallucinatory objects. Exploring level 2 while simultaneously recording would not prevent the changes from still occurring, and more often than not, the recording would show the person filming to be experiencing the anomaly in real time, as attested by the cameraman themselves. 
Therefore, the phenomenon is mainly thought to be purely an effect of being exposed to geometrical anomalies that are prominent in earlier levels. The only solid corroboration of the theory, a window outlooking what appears to be the whole, seems to be taking in a vacated attic that is partly or mostly constructed out of wood. However, no location slash level has, has matched the description other than level two itself. Although the level is mostly constructed with concrete, um, concrete certain, older, older areas of level are constructed out of wood, though cobwebs cannot form given that the environment is highly unsuitable for in, invertebrates. The, the supply, supply of provisions. I got this, I got this, sorry. <laughs> I, I had a little goof up with the camera and the mic. That's okay. The supply of provisions, the, the supply of provisions and hydration is heavily limited in level two, despite the number of water pipes in the level. Because no machinery or boiler rooms required for these pipes to function have been discovered, as well as the humid temperatures in various areas of level two, rust, bacteria, and other pathogens overwhelm its insides that may contain almond water. These are to be avoided, either from ingesting, either from ingesting, or even being near them, as an infection of airborne diseases such as hydrolytis plague has been has is possible when staying for a prolonged time near the liquids. Several pipes also carry out various substances, most notably extremely acidic carpet fluid, which can s cause serious burns when coming into contact with the skin. While there are at times signs of human activity, especially during the Great Depression, encounters with outside parties of wanderers as of currently have never been confirmed. Additionally, communication devices such as radios and walkie-talkies completely malfunction on the level. Their circumstances are unknown, as linear space in level 2 does not alter drastically nor even a slight bit unlike level 0. However, the possibly infinite concrete space of level 2 is theorized to be the perpetrator. There are no doors that can be found, and recollections of similar fi fixtures, such as windows, trap doors, and scuttle doors, are most likely in f in identified as cases of paramnesia. Exits in exits are instead found in the level's few crawl spaces, sometimes crowded by. Claustrophobic stretch. The claustrophobic stretch. Moreover, these wires do not hold electrical charge and could often result in serious injury. Although still speculative, there is a possibility that level two contains an anomaly that directs influences in, that directly influences wanderers in the level. Recent level two entr entrants have been tested up to use up more energy than the average person, as well as producing unnatural amounts of adrenaline when the body is active, e.g. running. Third, furthermore, most who enter level 2 also report either being more energetic upon arrival or more exhausted as they exit. Entities or subjects, humans slash animals, born in the back rooms are not affected, however, and it seems only earthlings experience the anomalous spasm. Escaping from entities, while made easier, can increase risks of dying from exhaustion or further entity attacks in the long run. I can read this. I don't know what that part says. Found in 2007, the diary was the first record of level two. Britain, oh, what are you doing? My findings number seven. My findings number seven. Found in 2007, how ironic. The diary was first the first record of level two. Written in 1762 by an unidenf unidentified explorer, Arthur T, whose surname is unidentifiable due to a lacuna, which, which was found slit between two pipelines. An Odyssey. To pristine white rocks, I wondered what a Zechariark what of Zechariark could have said to me. Would he have called me Ishmael? Perhaps the pedophogging of was too much for the crumbling marble that surrounded the Inelogen S cave spoke to me like I was Belhazar. The future was telling me to go thither. Something's been flowing through me during these times of hardship. Even I reminisced of my mat matrimony back home. And how I have not mentioned the woven cannon barrels that line up the walls, spheroids of these inside and cla inside and clouds not contrasted by the blues, the cramped and unreasonably elongated attic rain from a not so great height, and the stench stench of rotten cattle from a thousand brittle skeletons underground of Paris. Print persons in their towering periwigs and their shoulder caps with peacock feathers folligated in the fitting bodices like stars on the sky. 
Thenceforth, I end this for today, and you will be expecting a second handful of paper of paper in one fortnight. As the dole of the advances have made my home, as they say, a habit ne face ne piemon. The folks, the wanderers, as they say on the carvings of the walls, and I've sworn I would catch up to them, catch on to their ways. Have I spelt it out correctly? Entities and Anomalies While mild compared to other levels of the back rooms, level 2's position as a, as a starter location for many leaves much vulnerability, as most entrants are not accustomed to the presence of entities. Hotspots for entity activity have only been hardly mapped, and even finding one in the first place is made impossible from the level's significant size. Entities. Entities within level 2, i.e. clumps, hounds, smilers, skin, and skin stealers, have adapted to scurry headlong and mitigate their, their need to retain their energy like their counterparts in other levels. The absence of entities such as facelings and wretches, both having clues that they have populated the level at some point in the past, may be due to natural selection, given that their speed at maximum is lower than most humans, and, didn't, and not to mention that the anomaly that causes one to run faster within normal settings from the excessive energy consumption. Their biological structure as humanoid fingers, fi figures may, might also play into the right regional extinction. Coupled with their unstable bright, with the unstable of the lights, which may impair its night vision bearing inhabitants' sensitive sight. Those that presumably do not require much energy to survive, such as windows, do still exist in the level. Uniquely, however, rather than showing a void behind them, a hollowed out section of the level seems to lie beyond the glass. The shadowy figures that appear behind them look to have more physical form rather than being confined confined to the second dimension. Dimension. Recognize that the reach of them contorted of their contorted arms is more extended, possibly because of the level's layout once again. Biological pipeline network. Found in certain junctions of crawl spaces, sometimes lying behind sufficiently sizable pipes to hide their openings, these organisms can often stretch up to 20, 20 to 200 kilometers from their, quote, mouth to the ends of their digestive, digestive tract. Descriptions of their physical bodies are, di are divisive, ranging, ranging from their internal organs using the space of the clevages to protect themselves from having their pipelines being their entire body. However, a former bear more evident, a former, the former bear more evidence than the latter, as in Inflicting serious damage either through stabbings, gunshots, and grenades have resulted in them bleeding out. Going through these organic pipelines is often necessary, and fortunately would rather would rarely lead to death as the process of digestion would only occur if the things they consume do not move after a few hours. Most of their diet comes from discarded pieces of food, and weirdly debris, waste products such as sewage, feces, presumably, scavenged organs and visceria, etc., etc., including junk, specifically, especially ones made out of plastic, glass, metal, and rubber. Using entryways to their insides can be an effective way to escape entities. However, as they generally avoid these pipeline networks in fear of an uncertain detail. Alternative to using acids as a means to digest their foods, they secrete a base referred to as the Dewpoint Bayer solution. DuPont payer solution. This is quite likely due to their quote pipeline being constructed out of aluminum, which is they which the solution they produce do, do, do not dissolve. To presumably reduce the weight of their digestive tract, their theor their theoretical bodies are holding up. Besides, most of what they consume may contain sharp edges that could pierce them if it was made out of flesh instead of metal. If an organism were to end up being digested, its stomach acid would immediately be would, would immediately be neutralized by the alkaline, which is with, with the byproduct being their source of water and ions. The solution can does can dissolve an adult human within a matter of seconds. The clockwork theory, aka hallucinatory spatial fluxations. Just spatially, unlike level 0 and level 1, the geometry in level 2 does not have a concrete category, constant or fluctuating. Most seasoned explorers believe that, despite being one of the three foundational levels, the total size of level 2's accessible areas, which excludes the outer regions of the level, as is contemporarily assumed to be an expanse of pipeline networks lying in a void-like space, can theoretically be calculated if enough manpower and more developed technology is available. This has never been attempted, however, and it remains as Thorum with conflicting accounts on the subject. 
The first report of such occurrences have been lost in time, perhaps appearing since human, human documentation reached the back rooms. Individuals who experience this anomaly slash hallucination are typically novices and intermediate travelers, with the reason being still under speculation, ranging from the presence of furniture or areas that are officially known to be absent from level two to the level's layout drastically changing more frequently than the layout of level zero. Details that show most often in these cases include, but are not limited to, locked doors on walls, Locked doors on walls and dead ends of hallways. Blank windows, sometimes even placed on the floor. You good, you good man? Got it. Okay, continue. Sorry. All right, great. Small ch blank windows, sometimes even placed on the floor, either looking at a concrete wall, the void, or the hole. Small chairs and coffee tables, sometimes even with expensive cigars, narcotics, and a few already drunken alcoholic beverages on them. Paintings, particularly ones that depict bright outdoor landscapes. Fully furnished bedrooms akin to the ones in level 5, with the rooms that connect the main corridors of the level, and staircases that either directly lead to a wall or another corridor of higher level elevation. The clockwork theory suggests that the entirety of level 2 is a monumental clockwork with its inner mechanisms hidden behind the walls, suggesting that there is a machinery instead of pure concrete. The moving parts, which are the furniture and small parts of the level, rotate instantaneously and subtly to disorient wanderers. This theory does not apply to level 0 or level 1, as the former does not possess the required space for such equipment and the latter has significantly differing rooms that is simply not possible to alter without cutting into an edge. Digging the con concrete walls enough to assumingly reach these theorized machineries is not possible due to the in instruments needed, cannot fit, nor be brought within given, within given the limited space. False entrances. In levels that are numerically not far from level 2, including the ones that are now are known to not bear an entrance to the level, there are many locations that seemingly lead to level 2. Usually, some signs that, and drawings indicate likewise near the supposed entrances, with the identities of the persons responsible for graffiti or hand-drawn markings being unknown. The quantity of these indications, as well as the false entrances bearing set said markings, suggest that their placement was not coincidental. Evidently, the lo these locations might arise due to level 2's semblance to a utility tunnel, albeit with unconventional proportions in some areas of the level, as most levels appear to take place within commercial buildings, institutions, and industrial plants, where utility tunnels are often present. Parts of their edifice may look similar to level 2. Distinguishing the legitimate ones with these anomalies by, is done by turning at the direction in which one has entered and immediately after passing through the entrance. If the passageway does not disappear, replaced by an obstacle such as a wall or relieving a whole different section, that would otherwise be behind one, one upon entering. It means that it is a false entrance. However, there are a few cases of, in which the entryway is a door. There may be... There, where one may be trapped inside the corridor that is still located within their location due to it being automatically locked after it is closed. In levels with entity presence, it is especially advised against entering these masquerades as one may be liquidated by the, by, by the entity within the corridor without an adequate weapon. These areas are relatively small and only consist of one corridor, corridor of approximately 20 meters on average. Colonies and outposts. Due to the nature of level 2, no major bases have been established. Nevertheless, because of the temperatures within the ventilation system are, system are tepid, most groups tend to use explosives to carve out makeshift bunker-like air living areas within the walls. Entrances and exits. Entrances. Level 2 is the final level one could ac access by no clipping out of normal reality. No clipping out of and or entering maintenance areas of certain levels may lead to level 2. A variety of factors causes level 1 to fade into level 2, in addition to ordinary doors and stairwells which could grant one access to level 2. Entering vents that are sometimes found in level 8 leads here, removing a manhole cover in level 11 and, asc and descending downward. No clipping into the pipes in the corridors in level 17, Bunkers in level 41 may lead here. The green door located in level 111 has a chance of transporting one here, including a myriad of other levels. 
Fire exit doors in level 152, 4, lead to level 2. No clipping through a painting with a setting that resembles level 2 in level 264. Entering a loop door in level negative 1 has a chance of leading to level 2. As exiting through the lobby of level negative 115, though it may lead to other levels as well. Exits. Exit. Executing certain tasks and entering parts of this level may lead to its sublevels. Fire exits could be one could lead one back to level one or forward to either level three, level four hundred seventy seven, or level six hundred thirty seven. That is a that is a huge level skip, my god. <laughs> entering a golden door marked with the symbol, I don't know what that means, leads one to level five. Certain hallways of level two possess a chance to leading of, of leading to level four or level twenty seven. Coming across a sewer tunnel leads to level 34. Inf infrequent rooms, which are decorated with festive ornaments containing contain walls that have no click through, will direct one to level 125. Traverses deep enough within corridors that are purely painted white will bring one to level 268. The gradual increase of neon lighting sig signifies that an exit to level 695 is, 699 is near. I don't, I, I, um, this is a long one. This is a really long one. Do you want to summarize it? So I'm not it? sure. Uh, sure, I can summarize it like a general summarization. Yeah, like, just give a general and, like, just, just go over the main bits. The main, the So level stuff. two, level two, also known as Pipe Dreams, is a survival difficulty class two, which it, which is pretty, which is okay. It is the most, it is the, it is the final level, it's the highest level that you can enter through with normal reality, with a very low chance of that happening. It is consisted of concrete and metal, concrete and sometimes metal walls with pipe line, with pipes lining the, with pipes lining these tunnels, with these very short and very short and narrow tunnels. These tunnels are usually dark, but sometimes can have can have infrequent lights, fluorescent lights inside. There are many ex there are many entrances to level two, along with along with many exits to level two. There aren't there aren't any main there aren't many any main bases and outposts in this level due to its due to its um due to its uh environmental and phenomena due to its environmental nature and phenomena. And that's basically it. Okay. There are entities. There are entities in there, but it doesn't but specify they're, which. They're one. not. It, the the counts are rel, but the count of the probability of finding an entity is relatively low. Yeah. So we're probably going to end it off here yes, because um... this took this this we were going to do the main nine, but originally, but this. This, uh, this took way longer than we expected it to, so but the we'll first just make like, one, two, and three for this. Um, so we'll do three every episode, um, each one being relatively 44 minutes. Um, yeah. Same format that we did this one. Yep. So oh. this is somewhat dumb, and this that's Manistrid. We're Hello. signing off. Um, see ya. See you, YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye. Additional information. A seemingly nonsensical string of letters was recently found written on a wall with an unknown substance. The letters will be provided low, below, and the MEG urge any wanderers who can decipher this code to tell us its meaning. T V E M W I X L I S R I A M X What? Yeah. I'm no. reading I'm reading the letters. I did not. It's going to take too long. But <laughs> this already has like a 40 minute run time. Not really, but come on. Just Anyways, where was I? Yeah, we've, been, we've been doing this for 15 minutes. It's not that bad. You're overreacting, Mana. Look, I just want to get this done and we have to read everything. I get it. It's hard to edit it, but <laughs> you have to just believe me, okay? Mm-hmm. Why? I just want to read the letters. I don't feel like editing all of these letters onto the screen. 
Who said you had to do that? Mana, I, I'm genuinely ask, asking you, Mana. Who told you, who told you to do that? Because I didn't. I don't recall doing, I don't recall telling you to do that. Uh, I'm just going to end the recording and start over. Whatever. Alright, so the basically maintenance halls is like this place where you like it's like white. It's kinda weird. Cause yeah. You know? It's parking like it's got lots. these painting, it's got these paintings to P parking lots. Large empty spaces often drowsed. I wasn't done talking. What? I wasn't done talking. You 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 went that that you did that whole space for like m much longer than it needed to be. Oh my gosh, you you can't be serious right now. You absolute mana? candlestick. What? Mana, why? Why mana? Why? Why what? Cut. Just just end. Just end it. Just end the recording. <laughs> Entrances. Level zero. Wait. And by extent what? Eat. Mana, you're what? supposed to you're supposed to be reading exits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop the recording, man. Just stop it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna be starting level um what what, what what was the... it, it's level two we're gonna start level two yeah we're... Tri... mana what what are you mana uh, what are you trying to do uh we're, we're... my bad but just...